light microscopy. Obviously, light microscope, the way, I mean, it's in the name, basically. It uses light, okay? It uses light to visualize a specimen. Now, students hate this part. A lot of students especially hate this part. They're like, they'll be like, oh my God, I'm studying biology. Why do I have to look at physics? Uh, what does physics have to do with this? Because we're going to have to look at wavelength of light just a little bit. So if you're not a physics student, you know, uh, you might have to just uh, ha spend about a good five minutes for this. Now, light is an electromagnetic wave. You don't have to memorize that for the exam, but what you'll have to know is different types of light have different frequencies. Light itself, basically, I'm not the best at drawing this. I'll find my best. You have like different frequencies of light. So, and I always love to ask my students, which one is considered high frequency and which one's considered low frequency? Uh, if you're not so sure, or if you know it, um, let's just uh, take some time. Let's just consider the question. Now, low frequency of light is this one, where the peaks and the valleys do not occur very frequently, basically. So it takes some time for it to occur. Like, this much of length, there is only one peak and there's only one valley. We call that low frequency. But high frequency is the peaks and the valley appear much quicker. We can just look at it that way. You don't have to memorize what's the definition of low frequency and high frequency. But what you'll have to know is you'll have to kind of identify it if you're looking at a diagram which is considered low frequency and which is considered high frequency. Now, High frequency light, I guess that's purple, yeah, violet, okay, to a certain extent. My colors, I'm not so good with my colors. This is high frequency. It is extremely important to know that red light, red light is considered a low frequency light. Green falls somewhere in the middle over here, and violet is considered high frequency. Blue should be just basically next to violet. You must also know the wavelength. Now, when we're talking about the wavelength of light, the wavelength of light is just basically the distance between this peak to this peak or this valley to this valley. That's the wavelength of light. It is usually symbolized as a lambda. Now, so if they ask you the frequency of red light and the frequency of violet light, what do you think? Look at, look at the distance between these two peaks over here. And look at the distance between these two peaks over here. I'm just going to highlight it so that you can see it a bit more clearly. I'm just going to highlight these areas. So who will have a higher wavelength? What do you think? If you say that red light will have a higher wavelength, you are correct. Red light has a wavelength of about 700 nanometers. And remember in the previous video, we did in, introduce the concept of nanometers. Okay, so that's a new one, by the way. And violet light will have a frequency of about, give or take, 400 nanometers. Now, why does this matter? A lot of students are like, why do I care about this? Why do I have to give a damn <laughs> about, you know, the length of, the wavelength of light? How does this matter in biology? Kind of does. So in Cambridge, it is extremely important to know for your A-levels that red light has a frequency of 700, a wavelength of 700 nanometers. It's a low frequency uh, wavelength. And uh, violet light has a 400 nanometer wavelength and it's high frequency. All right. Now, why is this a big deal? Or why do I care? I love to ask my students these questions. Why do I have to care about this? Okay, how does this apply into microscopy or to visualize a specimen? Now, if you remember just a bit of revision from the earlier video, I mean the previous video, the previous video I stated that if you want to visualize an object, okay, or a specimen, 
the light must first be able to hit the specimen and reflect the specimen into, I mean, reflect the light into our eyes. Only then we will be able to see it. This is what I, I mentioned in the uh, earlier video. Now, so let's apply this. You see, there are certain structures in a cell that are too small to be seen using light. What do I mean by that? Let's consider the chloroplast. Now, the chloroplast itself is a very large organelle. The size may vary, but let's just say that the size of the organelle is 2,000 nanometers. All right, and let's also put another organelle over here, and that organelle that I'm just going to draw over here at the bottom is a ribosome. Okay, and the ribosome over here is actually only, it should be smaller than that, by the way. So I hope, maybe I should make it into like a, are you able to see this? Like a, like a green dot over there? I hope you're able to see that green dot. And the ribosome is about, give or take, 23 nanometers. Let's just put 23 nanometers. Now, imagine if I were to shoot light. I don't care what color light I shoot on it. Let's just say I just gave it red light. Okay. Now, red light has a frequency of 700 nanometers, so basically what will happen is it will just basically move along, okay? And the, as the red light moves along, does it hit the chloroplast? It hits the chloroplast. And because it hits the chloroplast, the chloroplast interrupts light and reflects it. So, in this case, if it's reflected, will we be able to see it? The answer is yes. You can use a light microscope and you can actually visualize the chloroplast in a cell. So in, in other words, you can actually view a chloroplast using a light microscope. Now, let's shift the focus to the ribosome, which is about 23 nanometers. I'm going to ask you a question right now. Will we be able to see the ribosome using red light? or violet light for that matter, will we be able to see it? The answer is probably no, because what actually happens? What do you notice? What is happening over here? <laughs> exactly. The red light just passes through the ribosome. The ribosome does not have the capability of interrupting the light. So how now? Can, so can we see ribosomes using uh, a light microscope? No, we can't. We will not be able to visualize a ribosome because they are too small.